why is it important that instructors should know join movements? Because we don't just want to know join movements. We want to be able to execute these joint movements. The knowledge, we want the knowledge to help us when we are teaching. So we're going to start with box, cardio box. When you know joint movements. I can use the under on my ass, up on my leg, up my body. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, um, we're recording at the weekend. Uh, after the weekend, we beat Australia. Yes, we beat Australia. Uh, let me just turn down the monitor. We beat Australia, guys. Um, first, uh, on the rugby field, GDP, oh, sorry, Springboks beat Australia. In at Loftus, I believe the score was 45-12. Yeah, they got a consolation try, otherwise it was over. Yeah, they scored a consolation try there at Loftus. And then the other part where we beat Australia was in Las Vegas, I believe, yeah. Uh, at the International Fight Week, we beat Australia there, took us to PC. Winning against Robert Whittaker on the second round. Yes. And Hunter stopped that fight. Say, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't kill our Robert. Said, yes, South Africa hits again. So up next, now we're going to New Zealand. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fitness Podcast with Z. Kampumelelo, Kakwebani. Kakelo, Kamshaba, Jusamo, Nyandin, Mkapisa, Fagati, Kwama, Tanan, Makapisa Gento Zaki, Manyatela Yitzibi, the Puma Le on Makosa Gedi Nisuka, Le Makum Kwebin, Kulalia Semaba, Pansbun Gosu Tuba, Kumukum Kani, Pamahahat. Ay! Where's that thing? Where's that thing? I'm looking for the gun. Gun, 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 gun. Yes. All right. That was not so far. I think I need to have it somewhere here. It's too far. But I'm not going to need it anymore now. All right. So, in today's episode, we are going to talk about joint, joint movements. And then we're also going to link those joint movements with, we're going to link them with, uh, let me just take up the mic a bit. Just like this is not working. So we're going to link our joint movements with the benefits uh, this can give in a class format. So let's start. All right, so we've got a couple of joint movements. And before we go to joint movements, it's important that we start with the planes. And just, I know that we did them in the past, in the past uh, episodes, but I think it's important that we, we, we do them again, just to remind you, or if somebody sees this podcast for the first time now, and then they are able to at least get a, a, a what we are talking about, especially if they don't have an idea what joint movements are. Sorry, what, yes, planes of anatomy before we get to joint movements. Eh? Right, the first plane of anatomy, so there are three planes of anatomy. The first one is the sagittal plane. Anything from the back to the front, from the front to the back is on the sagittal plane. These things are very important, please take note. Then the second one is going to be the coronal plane, everything from the left to the right or from the right to the left of the body. That's on the coronal plane. Then you get the transverse plane, anything, that means it cuts the body in half. So anything that is in this zone, in the middle here, across the body, 
that is going to be on the on the transverse plane so sagittal plane cut the body in in half anything here not in really in half but here then you've got the coronal plane you cut the body here <laughs> if you are listening or only the audio i feel sorry for you then transverse plane you cut the body up and down so coronal will be front and back sagittal will be left and right yeah i think that's a better another way of explaining right as we dive in guys it's very important for me to mention this i am not the only person that understands these things and i'm only sharing my understanding and i'm not saying this is the only way there are other ways out there and i believe ways that do work and and i want us to to understand one another on that part right so let's jump in let's start with oh i'm supposed to be facing like this one that's why i'm so uncomfortable today i've been trying eh? right so i've got my notes here in front of me let's go through the train movements right on the sagittal plane we get four joint movements on the sagittal plane you get flexion and, and and on the definition they will say it decreases the angle between two bones right so it's a movement an example of the flexion will be on a bicep curl on the elbow when the elbow bends it's on the sagittal plane knees of course sagittal plane your weight, your body, your waist on the sagittal plane. If you move your back, you can have some flexion. And then you get extension. It is the opposite of flexion. So after you flex, then you extend. So now it means that angle increases. The third one is going to be dorsiflexion. That's what when you do it with the foot now, you point your foot up towards your shin, toes towards your shin. That is dorsiflexion. Then the opposite of it, you're taking it down, that's plantar flexion. Those are the movements that are found on the sagittal plane. Flexion, extension. Then you get the one of the foot, it's still flexion, but it's called dorsiflexion. And then plantar flexion, that would be when you are you also, yeah, plantar flexion. They, they both call them flexion. Wow. And if you think about it, <clears throat> a plantar flexion would be more of an extension after you do it flexed. But they call it flexion still. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> we move on. We go to the coronal plane. I believe that's where most movements are on the coronal plane. Right, the first movement that you get is abduction. That means movement away from the midline, right? So I used to, when I was at school, I would say, when you're doing abduction, I would think of alien abduction. When, when they take you away from earth. So that arm is being abducted away from your body. Then that's where you get abduction movement away so it will be an arm going away it can be your your leg going away from the midline right that is your abduction then you get of course the opposite if it goes away it has to come back that's adduction then it's like you are adding bringing it back you are adding it so you are, you are bringing it back so, so you, it gets abducted by aliens and you bring it back, you add it back, back to the body. Yeah? You get it? Eh? Perfect. Then after that, you get elevation, movement of the scapula superiorly. Yay. That is difficult. I'm not going to de delete this part. I want you to laugh. Laugh at me. Superiorly. Yes. So you're taking the scapula upwards, superior, inferior. So you're moving it superiorly. Oh, I can't believe I struggled with superior. And of course, depression, movement of the scapula, inferiorly. Can't believe this. Wow. 
and his shoes. I'm tempted to delete it though, but I'll leave it. Depression, movement of the scapula inferiorly. Oh, yeah. Retraction, movement of the scapula towards the spine. So when you are squeezing your shoulder blades, especially if you want to target the rhomboids, you squeeze those shoulder blades at the back to target the rhomboids. And protraction will be movement away. Can you see even this movement? You take it in and when you're taking it away. Yes. Also, when you're doing push ups. Yes. Okay, let's continue. Uh, SD card is reporting that we are left with 30 minutes. I've got a lot to edit, guys. And then you get upward rotation. So your your shoulder blade is rotating upwards. This should be upwards. Yes. Then you've got a downwards rotation. Okay. Then you get inversion, lifting the medial edge of the foot, and eversion will be lifting the outside edge of the foot, right? The lateral edge. Then you get the rotation. Okay, your rotation, turning around. Oh, now, now you are on the transverse plane. That was the coronal plane. Then rotation is on the transverse plane. Okay, get rotation, rotation. And then you get pronation. That's now with the hand. So pronation, you bring it medially. Supination is the other side. I always say those people who, do, who are making shoes, shows that they were sitting on a table and discussing it so the other one when they were talking they were using the hand and then they were like okay let's put it on the feet instead of saying inversion and eversion let's say pronation and supination that's how it came to be i was in that meeting right then you've got horizontal abduction abduction movement of the humerus away from the body in the middle so this would be horizontal abduction right and then you get horizontal abduction this would be here okay and then you get circumduction so that's the combination of of all these i'm showing more with the shoulder also you can do it with the hips when you're wiggling wiggle 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 yeah so these are these are the joint movements but the focus is now, now that you've got these joint movements, how do you, how do you make it work in a, in a class setup? Why is it important that instructors should know joint movements? Because we don't just want to know joint movements. We want to be able to execute these joint movements, the knowledge want the knowledge to help us when we are teaching so we're going to start with box cut your box when you know joint movements what are the joint movements that are involved in a punch that's very important in a cross punch you have the following joint movements that are involved you, you start down on the ground right the moment you lift your heel now you've started moving a joint because now you've got your plantar flexion. Yes? We agree. And then you rotate the knee inwards. As you rotate the knee, the heel also rotates as well. The, the ankle also rotates. Okay, well, not the joint on the ankle, but as you rotate the knee, then now, obviously, your knee is slightly bent and you keep it that way then you rotate your hips yes remember rotation is on the transverse plane so that means you take your hip across and then shoulders now on the delivery of the punch because now you've made your anchor also you rotate your torso now the shoulder joint what does the shoulder joint do in a punch it does flexion, right? So this is shoulder flexion. That shoulder, that shoulder goes up. 
it does not do it like this yeah it does not you are not doing a a horizontal adduction when you're throwing a cross you are doing a flexion so that's why the elbow has to be in so it has to come and go straight up if you are not going to use the elbow joint it was going to look like this but now because you also have the extension of the joint then it goes like this but it doesn't end there because the punch comes from this position there is also the rotation of the forearm so now you get shoulder flexion elbow extension and the rotation of the end of the forearm together with the movement of the upper body and all these things you do them at the same time all of them at the same time that is why you need to practice punch slower punch softer until your body your brain saves these movements because where you get technique right is not when you are punching hard it's actually when you are punching softer and start increasing the power as you go but you first get it right practice practice get used to it increase the power slowly increase the power slowly until you can do it with like harder a lot harder without losing all those uh, things that i told you about perfect now you've trained people the right way now it's not easy to get guys it takes a lot of practice you don't just look at it and say i know it and then that's it no you have to go and practice because for your body to know it you have to do it over and over and over again that is why i always worry when we rush young instructors because most of the time they still haven't thrown enough punches and it's even worse when they haven't thrown the right type of them but that's not what we are about on this one right and then we we move on let me close this this notes then we move on when we get to a a conditioning class in a conditioning class these and uh, these movements are also very important. Let me explain. I don't know why I close them because I wanted to refer when I'm talking, but it's fine. I'm not gone. In a conditioning class, you get the following. I always like to divide the body before we start working. You've got the main skeleton, of course, the axial skeleton. Then you've got the appendicular skeleton. On the appendicular skeleton, you've got the upper extremities, and then you've got the lower extremities. Now, these are the three areas that you're going to work on when you're teaching your class. You're going to work on the main body. You're going to work on the upper extremities. You're going to work on the legs. Okay. So now, when I'm doing a conditioning class, I first go to... I know when I'm warming up, this area is going to be warm first. And then, of course, this will follow, and then the legs. And then when I'm getting colder after the warm-up, it's going to start on the legs, and it gets here, and it gets here. So this means that in my structure, it makes more sense to start with the legs. Push the legs, push the legs. I can mix it up a little bit, but... Starting with the legs helps because by the time people get cold, I've already done most of the work. And when I had a conversation with Dr. Makwan, we were talking about this. Also because now these are very difficult to do. You want when the brain is still there. You want when the, 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 mind, the brain and also the body is able to still do these things. Then, yes, then you can do them early at that time. Then I go to the upper body, which will be next to be, then the, 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 the core, uh, which is the main body. Another thing that is important is that when you're doing a conditioning class, there is something called agonist and antagonist. The muscle that's moving and then it goes away. So all the time when we are doing a movement, if you took this arm, 
this shoulder up with flexion. This means you must also do another one where you are taking it down. That is it. Right? And, and, and if you took it away, that means you must bring it back. Okay? So, these, knowing this also helps to know, okay, I did this, I did that, I did that. That means I should also do A, B, C, D, and E. So, these, these things, guys, uh, I don't want to lie, they, they are very important to, to know. That is why you should know train movements. Also, for the technique of the exercises, when you're doing squats, if you're saying the knee, it has to be a flexion. Very important. Keep those toes and knees in line, then you flex those knees. Then you know knee is a flexion. Is there a hip flexion? No, then you keep it up. Unless they say there's a hip flexion. Of course, you can't really, really be up like a chair. There will be a slight bend, but the focus should be keeping that weight on your heels and dropping all the way down. So when you know these joint movements, it's easy to do a conditioning class and also easy to help people. Because the moment you see the knee now is slightly, you know, as if it's doing another movement that's not flexion, you correct, hey, bring those knees back. They must be in line. You understand? Bicep curls, people do it like this. It becomes something else. But if you bring those shoulder elbows in and they are able to do it here, you know joint movements, you are able to correct and they do flexion as flexion. I don't know, guys. I think I must leave it here. Thank you very much. I hope, I hope this helps somebody. And of course, if you think that there are things that are skipped, please let me know on the comment section below. Remember, it helps if you subscribe to the channel, you comment and like the videos. Because if you do that, YouTube takes these videos and show it to more people like you and I who love this kind of subject. This helps our community to grow. And if our community is bigger, more questions come in, more content comes in, and 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 we, we all grow, right? Thank you very much, guys. Please don't make this your little secret. Share the video as well. After liking it, show other people. And even if you do it for the purpose of superiority, superiority, <laughs> Superiorly, if you do it for the purpose of superiorly, as long as you do it, we appreciate it. With a guy, on that note, guys, Usango, Unzita, Umkabisa, we are Puma, Dimitanda Nonke. Peace. I can do Zianda, Omnias, Omelet.